All right, guys. I'm doing the usual, like around the same time every year. I do. For I do simulations for the playoffs, only because they're bigger games than the regular season games. So I'm gonna kick it off with Wild Card Weekend with Oakland versus Houston. And I heard they're down. Oakland's down to the third string QB. I didn't watch any of the game, um, so I don't. In my opinion because of that I think Houston will have a big advantage that way so I would say Houston is going to win this game but um you know anything can happen we've seen the Browns win a game this year which I didn't think was gonna happen so you never know so I'll let you guys enjoy the game and I'll come back and talk once it's over hope you guys all enjoyed talk to you in a bit Thanks, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the heart of Texas and NRG Stadium in Houston. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Oakland Raiders and the Houston Texans. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. They come out here in the eye. On the ground, this is Lamar Miller. And nothing doing on his first run. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Dan Williams there to make the tackle. In a 3-4 defense there, and against the run, a lot of responsibility can fall on that nose tackle. A ton of responsibility, no pun intended, because <laughs> they've got to deal with not just the center, both guards, and a lot of times they have to eat up double teams in order to let the rest of the guys get to the football. But how about that play? You know, when you eat up the double team, he ate up the ball carrier as well. I was going to say, talking about puns, you said eat up the double team. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. Okay, in my short time, or maybe as some of the kids might say, my long time here on this earth, I've yet to meet a running back who turns down carries or catches. And Lamar Miller fits that bill for the Houston Texans. He actually moved to Houston for a chance to touch the ball more, and it's turned out to be a 1,000-yard season, the second one of his career. Yeah, second time in his career and on track for the best year of his professional career. He does it all. Runs it, catches it, he sets the tone for the Houston Texans on offense. It's a gain of five, and it'll be fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Now here's Shane Leckler on to put it away to his longtime team, the Raiders. Travis Carey back deep for the Raiders. <laughs> Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And now Oakland ready to take the field. First pass is incomplete. Latavius Murray, the intended receiver out of the backfield. And now it's second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green. Now Cook. Finding time. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It's an 8-yard pickup, and it'll be third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he's got some space here. 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, Oakland. Latavius Murray, 72 yards. And the Raiders have taken the early lead. 
Well, he only needed two yards. It was third and two, but he found a way to make the red seed part. And remember, it's third and two. In the NFL, that's not automatically a running down. Most of the time, it's a passing play. So in this case, now they're probably loosened up just a little bit, thinking pass. They hit him with the run, and boy, did they hit him big. Is he still going? I mean, Michael, you called the <laughs> touchdown, right? That's it. Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Texans offense now. They get set to head back onto the field. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And an alley to run. Lamar Miller. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller, 70 yards. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. And with his speed, if he just finds the slightest crease, he can take it the distance like he did there. How about the leverage up front? Offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space, that crease that he was looking for. And once he hits open field, he's going to be very difficult to catch and corral. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out, and they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. They go with Murray again. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Tackle made by Whitney Merciless. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. He'll drop to throw. He finds Crabtree for the completion. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Set, green, 39. 
They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. So this game's not very far along, and he's already found the end zone once, and now he started this drive with another big gain, another first down run. I've got to wonder if I'm the defensive coordinator, what do I do in this situation? It's only the first quarter, but do I go ahead and sell out and try and slow him down and make him beat me another way? Because the risk is, if I don't, he ends up having a monster game. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain down to about the 33. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. He's going to look deep down the field. And this is caught by Cooper for a Raider touchdown. Amari Cooper, 32 yards. And the Raiders have taken the lead. And man, Charles, talk about zinging something in there. Those gloves, they help with one-handed catchers, the fun stuff. Any padding for a rocket like that? One would think so, but I'll guarantee you this, after that throw, his hands will hurt later. Not right now in the moment. He's just feeling good about catching it. Yeah, a little stinger, but a touchdown. Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. This one taken from the seven. Oh, he shifts past him. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. Second down now after the incompletion. Now it's Miller, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football, but these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you right, often control the game. Green. Throwing on third down, it's Savage. Surveying the field, looking deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins, 73 yards. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. Novak to tack on the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14.
So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now here come the Raiders. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch-counterpunch, punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the... And this is going to be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Here we go now. Three, nine, nine. They'll try and run for it with Miller. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. He's already scored once. He definitely had his eyes wide open trying to get in there a second time, but I thought that was a really nice play defensively to deny him. Yeah, it was, as you said, keeping him away from his second first quarter touchdown there. They'll try to punch it in with Miller. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Texans have broken the tie. Not a bad start for him. Two drives for the offense, two rushing TDs. Almost like he's in the percussion section in the band, isn't it? Got a little oomph, right? Got a little crash, got a little bang. He's got it all as he gets to the end zone. Second rushing touchdown, as you noted, on two drives. He's off to a terrific start. Okay, you ready? Wait for it. But um Now it's Novak on. He'll send this one away following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action. I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Crabtree with it over the middle. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice Detroit! target. Detroit! That was second down one for Murray. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there to swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Let's go! Out of the gun now on third down. And that is incomplete. They were trying to get it to DeAndre Washington. And it's fourth and four. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. On fourth down, here's the Raider punter Marquette King to kick it away. Back deep for the Texans is Tyler Urban. And 
taken right on the 30. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Texans take possession. And now out comes Houston. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. It takes me back to when we sat with the offense coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense. And they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. They begin with a run by Miller. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? Here's Savage. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. The pro bowler, DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. And that play was what every defense is wary of. The big strike attempted downfield, but they were in excellent position. They didn't get fooled. And while he didn't come up with the interception, was able to bat the ball down. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Third and long, it's Savage. And down he goes, brought down a Raider sack. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Raider drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and 10. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. A big pick up there on the run. 33 yards. And it is still early, just the first quarter. But you start prorating the numbers, and we might be in for some history. I mean, that last run puts him over 100 yards already, and we've still got three quarters to go. They come out here in the eye. They go play action here on first down. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? They'll run here. It's Murray. Call it no game that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. On every 
every snap, a defense is trying to establish who they are. But on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are. And that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, right, and let's go ahead and give these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. On second down, here's Miller. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gain, they can run that play on any down. Tenth carry now for Lamar Miller. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. Three yards to go on second down. They go play action with Miller. Now it's Savage. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bruce Irvin in there to sack him for a loss of six. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Shane Leckler now, standing just outside his own goal line. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Carry on the return. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Raiders will take possession. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the Let's offense go. to jump things up and help their defense out. Give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second down to the offense needing five yards. They come out here in the eye. Again, it's Murray. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah. Every now and then, you can actually tackle that guy. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Raiders in possession of the football. 
Offense faces a third and medium with six yards left. Here we go now. Blue Throwing Cook. He's got time in the pocket. And he can't get away from the pressure. Cook goes down. Vince Wilfork in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. Here's Marquette King now as he's on to punt for Oakland. And he uncorks a beauty, best of the day. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Savage now to throw. Fuller brings it in over the middle. A gain of six there on first. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. This is Miller. He takes this for three to the 29. An entire crew of Raiders, an entourage there to make the tackle. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Now I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. They'll try to run for it with Miller. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. I know it's the first half, but it's still hard to curb the enthusiasm for that stop. Third and one, and the offense can't get there. The defensive team has got to feel very good about themselves. Great job out leveraging the offense. Here's Shane Leckler now. He's been terrific so far. Only 29 yards on the punt there. Definitely not his best. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. John Simon in on the stop. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Room here to run. And he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. First down, Murray. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, and sometimes that just happens. It is the NFL. They will make some plays against you. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. They'll run it now, out of the gun. 
They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Tackle made there by Quentin Dimps. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time he hand the ball to a back. Well, they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Now Cook. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. Out is Janikowski now for the Raider field goal try. This from 54 yards away. And the 38-year-old vet able to split the uprights, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So a good kick there, and they finish off the drive with three. And that should be the goal for an offense, finish each drive with points. So that's a nice job there to come away with at least something. Now, after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Hurry up, here we go. On first down, it's Savage. Right side, caught Fedorowicz. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Mario Edwards Jr. there to bring him down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. So he makes the grab, and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line, giving them time to complete that first down pass. They isolate Hopkins on the left side. Now a play fake here on first down. Finding time. He's going to air one out. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Play fake to Miller. Now Savage surveying the field. He's going to try and go deep again. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Texans will extend their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over.
Now it's Novak on. He'll send this one away following the touchdown. To return, it's DeAndre Washington. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they've got to make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And that's incomplete. So how about that one, Charles? We haven't seen that in a while. The illegal forward pass. The quarterbacks get so much leeway on this play that you're right, Brandon. It is very rare that we see the call come out for a legal forward pass. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. They'll look to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. Out of the gun now on third down. He's got time. And he took the contact as he was throwing it. And the ball drops incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And that one hits at the 7, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And here comes the Texans now. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. But people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. They'll run with Miller, and he'll find some space up to about the 25. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. So third and five, third and medium here. From the gun on third, Savage. He's got time in the pocket. To the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Now that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Now carry. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. 
sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Throwing. Cook. Finding time. Still back there. And this one complete to Seth Roberts. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They get 25 yards out of that one. Good enough for an Oakland first down. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helm and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. They go play action here on first down toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Right. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Let's go. Green 39. Green 39. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. And on the ground they go with a running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the pickup. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. So they brought in an extra defensive back here, so probably not expecting a run on third and three. A good call. Now Cook. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And Janikowski bangs it through and high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend-but-don't-break approach, but it kept the offense out of the end zone. Now after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They isolate Hopkins on the left side. On first and ten, Savage. Hopkins on the grab over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Savage on first. Caught left side, Hopkins. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't it? Because Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or 
keeps hitting the calculator, but my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. And he's got him over the middle, Fedorowicz. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Running left is Miller. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. has been busy today and he'll go down at the 28 at five yards on the play there as the drive will continue second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield i bet the offensive lineman said are you kidding we just get on our backs and let's go get the first down they love being physical so the run moves the chains and here we go on first down able to shed the tackle but the reserves come in for the stop just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine now that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense hold them to one yard on a first down run it'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play They'll run it now, out of the gun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves them with a third down and eight. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Here we go now. Throwing on third down, it's Savage. And finding Fedorowicz. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Hurry up, here we go. 319. 319. Now inside the red zone, Savage. Got a man open. It's Fuller for the Texans' touchdown. Will Fuller from 17 yards out. And the Texans will add on to their lead. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. It's Novak on. He'll send this one away following the touchdown. Here's Taiwan Jones on the return. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. So out come the Raiders.
Warriors. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one. Too. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about Toe that. Bash. <laughs> Super toe. Here's Wolford over the middle. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And quickly, they get to the line. Throwing, Cook. And he is going to lose yardage here. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. Now Cook. Surveying the field. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And now out comes Houston. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. They isolate Hopkins on the left side. Here's Savage, and he's got it, Fedorowicz. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Now hold everything here, we're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Four yards remaining now Single on second down. They go play action with Miller. Now it's Savage. He's got time. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Keith Mumphrey that time. And it's third and four. is Alfred Blue, and he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. On third down, that's a good job of situational football. And under now whistles come in, we're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Come on, G. Green, 39. Green, 39. Savage on first. Underneath for Miller. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll make it a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports halftime report. Larry, that'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Let's go! Green! 
Second half starts with a run by Murray. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Well, so much for halftime adjustments by the defense because you know they had to talk about it. The entire first half, they struggled to contain him. And here he is coming out in the second half and establishing the same tone. Still running the football with authority, still gaining big yardage. So I just figure in the offensive side, they said well, there is no adjustment. Until they slow us down, keep going at them, keep handing them the football. Roberts with it over the middle. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? They, let's, see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Let's go! Green, 39! Carries piling up. It's Murray again. And he's going to take it down to about the 35 here. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They'll drop to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. scrimmage but no more than that call it no game that time and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive agreed and they really needed that one for confidence just to feel a little bit better but i don't know if i would be daunted by them stopping me on one run this drive has gone pretty well i could come right back at them And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. down carry now for Miller. Oh, a heck of a move. Oh, man. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. That was a good, strong run there. While it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Miller, the lone set back. And he'll get it up the middle. And he's brought down. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Another good run there, and now we're seeing an offense that's imposed its will on a defense. When we talk about that all the time, what does it really mean? It means that the guys on the offensive line, they feel like they can do whatever they want. They're in the huddle saying, run it again. Give us another chance to smack someone and create some space. On the defensive side of the ball, not only have they imposed their will against you, you're almost powerless to figure out what you're doing there, but you got to keep your spirit up at the same time, and they're taking that too. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make it second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. blown up losing yardage back at the 35 it's a loss of two now third down partner i think there's a lesson there some days you're just having a really tough time and for the defense today has been that day but after that play what do you learn you can still make plays even when the other guys having success against you a nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight throwing on third down it's savage 
takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And Novak's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. Now it's Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. Right. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sand. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Give him five yards on the run there, but it'll leave him with a definite third and long on the horizon. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Crabtree with it, over the middle. It'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. They'll look to set up his blockers. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now out comes Houston. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They'll run it again with Miller. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Now a handoff to Miller. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. A gain of three, second down. 
We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. They come out here in the eye. Now it's Miller running right. And some room to maneuver. And he's brought down. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. When you see these nice, explosive, strong runs, and this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows his offensive line's gonna give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. On first down, it's Savage. Fuller brings it in over the middle. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. scrimmage and driven backwards they'll lose a yard and it brings up third yeah let me puff out my chest a little bit even though i'm not rooting for either team that was a really nice defensive play it's awfully fun to watch even in an offensive game the 25 yard line is what they need here this is third down from the gun on third savage Complete to Mumphrey. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And that will extend their lead even further. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. It's Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Uh, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Now Cook. This one caught left side by Cooper. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. All right, here we go. Blue landed. High blue landed. Throwing. Cook. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. 
So many components go into a well-executed screen pass. You've got to sell, sell, sell. Offensive line's got to sell like they've missed blocks and then they move out and they're out in front of the running back. He's got to sell that he's trying to block and then he slips out into the route. The quarterback has to sell that maybe he's trying to throw it downfield. Instead, he slips it off to the running back and when you get one set perfectly, you have to catch the ball. And that didn't happen on that play. He's going to sling this deep downfield. He's got it at the 15. And he'll be down deep in Houston territory. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. A 20th carry coming up now for Murray. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now out of the gun. Oh, he bowls over it. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Raider touchdown. Latavius Murray, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Raiders get a score closer. Now he's doing his part, but still facing a sizable deficit. And he would like to do more, but he needs help from the other two-thirds, right? He needs his defense to bow up a little bit. And he also needs special teams to maybe create some big plays and help them get back in it. Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yep. Run what Put you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's able to get out to the 32. Brought down there. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Isolate Hopkins on the left side. Right, here we go. Three, three, nine, three. Three. On second down, here's Savage. Mumphrey with it over the middle. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Here's Savage on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. the counter it's Miller and some room to work and brought down but not before they're inside the 25 they give them 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs how many times do we say in this game that speed kills and it does it in so many different ways in this case 
You got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. Back now at the home of Super Bowl 51 in RG Stadium in Houston. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. Now let's go! Green, 39! They keep it with Miller on first down. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Miller, the lone setback. He's going to get the football. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Travis Carey there to make the tackle. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And here comes play number six on this drive. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Here's Blue. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. It's a pickup of three, but it brings up what will be an interesting fourth and one. But a good play is made on defense. Oftentimes, leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned. All the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short of a first down. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And that'll push the lead up to 17. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point. Being three scores down, I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. Now Jones. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Raiders offense now. They trot back out, and they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch in the end zone again. They know it's not easy. But what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, we gave up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes the quarterback look a whole lot better. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll look to throw now on first down. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. You know what the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? Bet you're going to tell me. Good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first, it's good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Give him seven on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. All right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> On third down, he'll drop to throw. He's got time in the pocket. He finds Roberts complete. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he 
takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. Brian Cushing, the linebacker, in on the tackle. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. shotgun he'll look to throw throwing for his running back and he's got him complete and he's going to get it down to the 33 yard line here It's complete. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman certainly flinched there before the snap. A good call. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. One receiver to the left is Cooper. Now Cook. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. to throw again finding time over the middle it's complete and this time not quite to the 30 it'll be down at the 31 yard line he'll wind up getting 11 on that one and that'll bring up fourth down but that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense isn't it take whatever you want underneath by all means out is janikowski now for the raider field goal try from the right hash this from 48 And Janikowski bangs it through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. All right, so it's getting late in this one. Now, you could argue that they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but they still face a pretty uphill battle. Yeah, even with the field goal here, it's going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns now to get back in it, and that's going to be a tall order against this defense. Now, after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Texans' offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And last time, they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Here's Savage. And to the left side, Fedorowicz has it. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. 
who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Well, the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. Savage on third. He finds his target, Fuller. Now, a loose football. The ball comes out, and they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And it's tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal. Well, they got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. So they're operating in the red zone. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. someone to throw to and eventually taken down here great coverage downfield Christian Covington in there to drop him and it'll be a loss of about eight in a play like that with how far he had to go to make that sack shows how athletic defensive ends have become in the NFL and not just athletic this is coached in a big way run to the football at all times how about him never giving up on it and pursuing all the way across the field now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this is caught by Cooper for a Raider touchdown. Amari Cooper with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Raiders have cut it back to within a score. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? <laughs> you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air. Because right now, we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Now Janikowski following the score. He'll boot this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And that'll be incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. And back to the air. Savage on second down. And he comes back with one complete. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him. Why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And defensively going with a dime set. Six DBs on third and four. From the gun on third, Savage. And finding Fedorowicz. And they get 10 yards there and convert on third. And that pickup of a first down, 
That's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. On first and ten, Savage. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Showed a nice little juke, but then the window quickly closed. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Again, it's Miller. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. And at this stage of the game, time a factor, time on their side as they just try to eke out the final precious moments of this one. Third and two, Savage. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. It's a gain of four, and it gets him the first. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you can actually be pushed back before the first down. It's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. So the offense has it first and 10. Miller, the lone setback. And he'll get it up the middle. And he will be stopped here for no gain. And that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Now whistles and the Raiders are going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And the eighth play on this drive double coming tight, up. Guys, alert, alert. Green, Let's green. go. Green 39. Green 39. Here's a give to Miller. Spinning past him. And he, now the Raiders are going to use another timeout here. That'll be their second. So one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. Miller and a short gain here down to the 22 now hang on here timeout called timeout called by the defense that'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside right, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense And they'll run it here. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was. 
handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. And the offense lining up first and ten. Savage is going to throw it. This will be caught at about the six. Give him nine there on the first down completion. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. The the Alright guys, so the simulation has spoken. That first quarter was the most insane first quarter I've ever watched in Madden history. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I always say this, I always forget. 15 minute quarters sometimes are a little too long. I'm going to try 10 minutes on the... I believe it's Detroit and Seattle. I believe is the other... Saturday game unless it I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure I recorded two Saturday games first then the Sunday ones after I'm pretty sure yes yeah, Detroit at Seattle Because the way that looks to me that's a little absurd So I'm gonna do the Detroit Seattle one as 10 minute quarters each just to uh Just to see if there's a major difference. Maybe I'll find like maybe 12 minutes is better but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you all in Seattle for Detroit at Seattle. And we'll see who's going to be the victor in that one.